Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about green. All things green. From four leaf clovers to money to everything to the grass around us. Green is everywhere. So uh, one of the reasons I wanted to do a deep dive on the color green is because as a paint color it is fascinatingly diverse in what we can achieve with it. And I want to take a moment to really unpack a color and I'm going to, I'm starting with green because it's one of the more interesting. I'll probably move through a series of colors over a series and, and you know, the hobby cheating going into the future here. And what I want to really talk about is both what green can do, why it's so versatile, why it's so interesting, and sort of show some of it in application. So green obviously is, you know, one of our, <laughs> it is a color, it is a hue, it exists on the color wheel. Uh, obviously we get it by mixing yellow and blue. And that unique position as a color that comes from yellow and blue actually gives it some, uh, some very special properties when it comes to the pigments that are normally used to create tones like this and just what yellow and blue allow when those colors are translated to paint in the sort of real world, okay? So let me see if I can unpack this for everybody. Let's take a color like orange as a, as a you know, so comparative secondary color, right? Made up of red and yellow, so it's got half the same thing in it. So when we look at a color like orange, we know we can make orange more red. Okay, fine, then we get, but red becomes quite dominant. We know we can add yellow. When we add white, it becomes kind of flesh tone. We recognize it as something completely different. You know, it becomes Caucasian flesh tone. If we add yellow, it becomes quite yellow very fast. We start recognizing it as like ochre or something that isn't really orange. The band of color that we actually as sort of humans tend to recognize as orange is rather limited. You can do things like add browns and stuff like that. And that's probably one of the most common things we, in we encounter in nature because we encounter rust and oxidation and weather on iron and steel, which gives us a bunch of different orange browns. So, but we keep, but there's not that many other weird colors I can sort of throw in here to get differing and interesting effects. Adding purples or blues, uh, blues obviously is complementary, so it just gives me like a, a weird, uh, you know, brown or gray depending on the exact mixture you get. Um, and purples and and greens don't really do much of anything of value when added to orange. In most cases, there are some exceptions, but in most cases. Green, on the other hand, is fascinating because we, yellow and blue are both, when put into paint, very translucent colors in their uh, main application. They're also very versatile colors themselves in that blue has this very wide spectrum of colors that it can represent. Yellow has this very high brightness. Uh, and so those two things mean that when they are both put together into a single color, we get a lot of versatility. In addition, we encounter green in a lot of different formats every day. So whether it is all the things I mentioned, whether it's the dollar bills, if you're here in the US where all our money is green, uh, you pull out of your pocket or the grass in your front yard or the leaves on the trees when they're fresh or the stems of flowers and on and on and on, you know, the leafy vegetables you eat and all that kind of stuff. And all of those things have this huge variance of green and yet we still recognize them all as green we just our, our brain for whatever reason still classifies them as green i don't know if there's like some kind of scientific explanation for that i just know it's the case and I'll, I'll make it very real for you let's start with the simplest stuff let's add more of the components to this right when we add more yellow we get colors that look like this right we get this sort of escorpina green this kind of situation so this thing probably looks yellow when put next to here, but if I put it next to a different color, right, I can change the way that we perceive this. If 
but we get this this color and we still recognize all of these as greens this sort of escorpina color very popular it ends up being the color of we have a lot of sort of preconceived notions when it comes to this stuff too warpstone often ends up this color because it there's a reason for that. It's not accidental. It's not just history. It's that these colors together, this sort of yellow and green, evoke these feelings of radiation, plutonium, you know, just that kind of thing. Um, there's a reason why they chose, you know, the color to be sort of the Hulk and stuff like that and everything else that's related to radiation, even though, you know, gamma radiation and those kinds of things are invisible and kill you. Uh, they're quite deadly, but they're not actually little green rays that broadcast out of something that's radioactive. And yet, nonetheless, if I paint something that's supposed to be toxic or sick or radioactive or plaguey in these tones, it will feel right and comfortable. Whereas, if I were to paint them in there, in the other side of it, let's say we added something like some blue-green, right? So this is jade here, uh, which is a more traditional blue-green. If you go too far, you end up in like turquoise or something like that where it goes completely blue. But you can soften that a little bit and end up somewhere like that, which is technically blue-green, as it says right there. If I were to paint, you know, this has about the same amount of blue as these have yellow to some degree or another. And yet, if I were to paint something that's warpstone in this jade color, it wouldn't feel right because, again, when we think blue-green, or this sort of verdigris, right, which is just blue added along with white to tint it up or gray or something like that. This doesn't have the same sort of emotional resonance to it, right? Jade feels more, and this sort of verdigris feels more artificial, uh, much more, I, I want to say plastic, but that's not really the right word, but the point is, is that it doesn't feel like something that occurs as naturally. Right? It lacks those natural tones. At the same time, we can go into a lot of different other places. When we add things like black or deep browns, then we get these sort of camo greens, these infantry army patterns we're all very familiar with. Here I've got gunship green and ancient oak and camo green. You know, a couple of them even have warlike names because we often see these being these darker green tones, right, that are desaturated and have the life sapped out of them and yet are still very much something that occurs in nature. In fact, they feel more earthy because of the introduction of these brown tones, these black tones, stuff like that. We can also add, uh, we can also, as I said, add white or gray or even flesh tones. And I want to sort of experiment with that today because I think when a lot of people take their green, whatever it happens to be, and you can see, like, this is, I don't know, a quarter of the different colors of green I had. I just started grabbing random greens. Um, when you when you take any of these and start mixing them together, how we perceive it changes a lot. So here on my palette, I have a fairly neutral tone green. It looks a little brighter in the light, but in reality, it's a fairly neutral tone green. And then I have brown, black, ochre, light blue, gray, and white. And over here, we have a little Skaven fellow. And what's wonderful about the color green, and what I hope, I, I, what I want to get people thinking about is when you apply green to something, to a miniature, I want you to think more about what you're really doing there. What you're really trying to communicate with the paint. Because if we bring in brown, right, maybe a touch of black, what I get is something that looks like that camo, that nice, deep, dark green color, right? And that can be a really wonderful color for something like his robes, which we want to feel muted and desaturated and largely dirty, earthy, right? This guy is a rat. He spends most of his life down in the dirt, in the dust, in the ground, right, doing these sorts of activities. And so I don't want him to be, if I sort of threw some blue-green at him, he would feel very strange. He would feel too clean, right, too, uh, too much like he was wearing something artificial. At the same time, when I move up then into a highlight color with that green, 
I can make a choice. If I take my green and bring in my yellow ochre, maybe a touch of that white, just a touch to brighten it up, what I get is something that looks more like that warp stone color, right? Whereas, if I take that green and I bring in some of that sky blue, I get something that looks a lot more artificial, but again, we still recognize as green, okay? How about I take some of that green, you see where this is going? And we'll bring in some of that gray. Now I get the color of like mint gum. Let's move my painting light here a little. Sorry. There we go. I don't want that reflection directly in there. All right? This looks more like a stick of double mint. Now, if I take that darker color that I've applied there and I put some double mint highlights over the top, double the pleasure, double the fun. Clan Skyrets, double the fun. I don't know, whatever, something, right? That's not even close to what that song was. The point is, is that it's going to feel very strange. Like when I look at this guy now, he has this very unusual look, right? Like why is this so bright? Not just because my layers are, are very pronounced, that doesn't matter, right? It just doesn't feel like the right highlight color for him. Whereas if we take that yellow green, which yellow is a perfectly valid highlight. And I work some of that in there. Right? And then let's go back to my darker color there. We'll kind of smooth out some of those edges, wet blend some of that paint together. What happens there is I get something that feels much more like what we would expect to see from a character like this. It looks a little more sickly, a little more pale, right? Still bright. I can. It's still certainly a highlighted color, like no part of what I did is in any way not highlight this guy. And this is one of the things I think I often hear people say. This is one of the reasons I want to do this series. I hear people say, well, you know, I didn't really highlight it because I wanted it to feel dirtier or I didn't want a lot of contrast because I wanted it to feel more realistic or something like that. Now, sometimes that can be true, but oftentimes it's not. Like, even something very dirty can still be quite well highlighted. You just need to be choosing sort of your colors more carefully. So we work in more browns into the shadows. We work in more yellows, especially yellow greens, like this, into the highlights. And what we get is still a highlighted model, but it has a very different feeling than if I were to do the whole thing in more artificial colors. So for example, we'll set him to the side. Let's push up his highlights just a little bit more. Again, only using the yellow. We'll really get him like super highlighted here. Okay, all right. Oh, metal miniatures, how much I hate you. Okay, let's set him to the side. Let's grab a different one. Guy number two. So, our second, uh, this guy actually has his backpack. These are very old figures. So with him, instead, let's go a different direction. Let's just go straight green. Let's grab a little black so we have a nice low tone. You can see the difference already there in earthiness between those two. 
right? This one feels much cleaner than that one. The addition of that brown does a lot of work. So now let's get a nice coat of that down on him. We'll stick to the front here. Again, all I did was add black to get a lower tone. Just so I had something to work from. Quickly just knocking that base coat on there. Hyper double speed. Okay. Now let's go to that blue green. That blue is a nice bright color, certainly functional as a highlight. Nice white blue, no issue there. It's certainly going to produce some contrast. So let's hit the same exact highlights as we hit before. Right. Okay. Then we'll take that we'll go back to our original green just like we did last time. We'll smooth out some of those lines. And let's grab a little more of that just pure black like we did with the brown. And let's really lay some of those shadows in there. Okay. So now we got that guy. Now, let's take a look at them right next to each other. One of which is in our green-brown, and one of which is in our green-blue. Now... Those both had the same exact green color. This is the only green I have on the palette, right? I have one color green. And yet, look at how different those two miniatures feel, right? When you look at these two, I'm sorry, I didn't like how that was quite stark there. I didn't want to draw inappropriate attention. Okay. When you look at these two, and you think about our, our, our yellow, brown, green guy here, as opposed to our blue, black, green guy here, like both have about the same level of contrast. Both have the same level of sort of color showing and, and you know, highlights placed and stuff like that. The difference being that this one has a completely different ambiance to it. Its tone is so much more sickly and so much more dirty, right? And that's because of the colors that we used. How we decided to deploy the green. So, that's kind of what I wanted to cover today. Um, again, I thought this would be interesting to do as a series, so I'm starting here. It's, it's sort of a deep dive on some color theory, emotion, ambiance, that kind of stuff. The idea is that even when we're working from our basic colors, there's a lot of variability we have in how we apply them. And thinking more carefully about the tones we use as both our shadows and our highlights uh, can completely alter the nature of how the miniature looks, regardless of what the base color is, right? So you can say, well, these are both painted green. What color are you painting your guys? I'm painting them green. But look at how different it would feel, depending on how you decided to, what green you decided to deploy, All right? So there you go. If you like this, hey, give me a shout down below. I'm very keen to hear your feedback on whether or not you think this is a valuable series to sort of go down. It's something I think about a lot when I'm painting miniatures of sort of what to use as highlight colors and shadow colors uh, with the kind of six main tones of the color wheel, if you will, uh, if we want to think of the traditional color wheel. And I, I, 
I hope it will be useful. If it is, give it a like, give me a comment down below if you'd like to see me explore more colors in this way and kind of talk more about this kind of color theory because I think it can be quite useful in making your army both uh, both to give you some ideas for painting combinations, but also in helping you to get your army feel the way you want it to feel. Okay? So, if it is, give a shout. And if it's not, say that too. That's okay. If you, if you don't feel that this is as valuable, feel free to go ahead and leave that comment. That is often just as good of a, uh, a read as to where I need to go in the future. But, for right now, I hope you enjoyed that little deep dive into the color green. Uh... I'm going to keep painting up my little dudes here, and uh, you know they'll be they'll, then they'll be ready to throw horrible, horrible, debilitating gas bombs at all the enemies of the verminous horde. But like I said, if you like this, give it a like. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating. We have new tutorials here every Saturday. Uh, share these if you like. If you have suggestions for future videos, please feel free to leave those down in the comments. But as always, I do very much appreciate you watching this one, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.